spring storms across the west flooding some streets, crumbling others. We're really discouraging any visitors from coming down here until until it's deemed safe. A good evening. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Christian Kaft and a mixed bag of stormy conditions are causing trouble for people all across the West. Flooding is the main concern in Arizona tonight. In California, it's erosion following weekend storms and a little farther east. People are dealing with new snowfall. We begin tonight's weather team coverage with Fox 10's Lauren Clark, who's been speaking with people getting detoured by flooding in Scottsdale, Arizona. From a wet weekend to a moist Monday, rainwater pooling on golf course grass off Indian Bend and Scottsdale roads as the overflowing running streams are spit out by silver stallions. For bikers like Judy, every trail that we've been on has been flooded over at some part. And runners like Susan. I'm not going that way. The saturated sidewalk caused them to turn back around from their morning workouts. So did this family who cut their walk short too. too much. We can't even go over there. It was not usual like that. Yeah, I never see something like that in Arizona. But the waters didn't just wash away morning plants. It caused problems on the road. It's always busy when it we have these kinds of events. Doug Ninzel, an ADOT spokesman, says crews battled two main issues. State Route 51 southbound near McDowell, it was a matter of debris being in the drainage system. And then on Loop 101 in the Scottsdale area, it is that water was gathering and we're actually working on the drainage system in that area as part of the widening project. So again, that's a matter of responding uh, we have portable pumps that are brought in. We work to take care of that as quickly as possible. And ahead of even more showers, warns drivers to do their best to avoid problems. Do not drive into areas where there's standing water along the freeway. As for Judy, she's just thankful the early raindrops brought a little bit of sunshine. We're just exploring and trying a new one and, you know, still enjoying the day. ADOT says really the problem begins on the road when they have over an inch in an hour or less. So if you struggle driving in the rain, try to be off the roads at that time. Reporting here in Scottsdale, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News. Authorities are warning people to avoid water all along LA County beaches because of runoff from weekend storms. Public health officials say coastal waters likely contain high levels of bacteria. The weekend brought record rainfall, lightning and snow to parts of Southern California. That water now draining into the ocean. For now, health officials want people to avoid the ocean until at least Wednesday morning. And a section of scenic California Highway 1 collapsed following this past weekend's rain. KTVU's Ann Rubin shows us how drivers are navigating that now narrow road. Enrique Uribe had no idea he'd be stuck, but after a job in Big Sur this morning, he is. I did not, not till I was, till I got to here to the sign, till I got a notification saying, hey, it's closed. And we're like, oh man, and we're like a mile away. We're like, oh well, so here we are stuck now. Closed because this section of Highway 1, just a half mile from the famous Bixby Bridge, has fallen away. It happened after a round of wet weather and high waves on Saturday. At the present time, we're really discouraging any visitors from coming down here until, until it's deemed safe. State parks in the area are now closed. Campers' money will be refunded. But it is a big blow to Big Sur that had yet to recover from last year's landslides and road closures. For the business people, it's horrible. Right now, only residents and essential workers are allowed through, and only twice a day at 8 and 4. Martin Hubbs, who lives here, ventured to the grocery store in case things get even worse. You never know. It's raining on Thursday, so I might just say it's too dangerous. And boom. So I got my tea, my milk, and I'm set up. Caltrans crews do have a plan for a temporary fix in place. It involves expanding the shoulder and placing 500 feet of concrete barriers along the center line of the roadway. No word how long a more permanent fix might take or how long this inconvenience to drivers might last. It's like I'd rather be at work or at home than here. <laughs> Caltrans says the twice a day convoys will go on indefinitely unless there's inclement weather or site conditions change. Near Big Sur, Ann Rubin, KTVU Fox 2 News.
Yeah, from rain now to more than rain falling in the west. A grapple came down in Boulder, Colorado this morning. Grapple looks like tiny pieces of hail. The weather phenomenon actually happens when falling snow melts and becomes super cooled as it approaches land. This marks the beginning of what's expected to be a stormy 24 hours in Colorado, including snow showers outside Denver tonight. And we are seeing new snow in New Mexico and Utah. Someone posted to social media today calling snow coming down east of Albuquerque wet and lumpy. Now, north of Salt Lake City, snow from Easter showers is still sticking around. And it's time now to bring in KTVU meteorologist Roberta Gonzalez, who's tracking all these spring storms. Roberta? No, it is April 1st. That, that's just a big joke on us right there, Christian. Yeah, I, well, no joke. This, was, <laughs> this, this, this is a pretty big deal, yeah. We were hoping for springtime weather all up and down the West Coast, and guess what? It is no joke. We got it here today across Eureka all the way into the Bay Area and into the South End. But look what's brewing upstream. It's a brand new area low pressure and this is the upper level trough. It has an associated cold front. It will make an impact on the Pacific Northwest beginning with Tuesday just off the Vancouver coast into Seattle. Then it begins to forge into Oregon where they've had spectacular Easter weather and now to kickstart this first day of April. But this is going to gradually slide down the California coast beginning with Wednesday, clouding up the skies in the Bay Area, then gradually marching towards Southern California by Thursday into Friday. Today in San Francisco, taking a look at the beautiful painted ladies. Look at that sky. Visibility unlimited, 69 degrees. Average high in San Francisco this time of the year is in the low 60s, so it was just spectacular. Meanwhile, the average high in Los Angeles is 70 and pretty much spot on for this time of the year and it was rain free. Now we take you on over to Phoenix, Arizona, where they had lots of clearing of the skies at 64, a little unseasonably cool for Arizona and Seattle, Washington, 61 degrees with spectacular conditions, but all that's going to change in a hurry beginning with Tuesday with the increasing cloud cover. Take a look at the current temperatures. A pair of fours in Chicago right now, 54 degrees in Kansas City. There you have that temperature in Denver, Colorado. It is now 58 degrees in Seattle and at this hour, high 40s in throughout Salt Lake City. Now again, here's the deal. That upper level trough descending on the western states beginning as early as Tuesday. And as this pushes through, it's going to bring another foot of snow into the Greater Lake Tahoe area beginning on Thursday. Now in San Francisco, we have the Giants home opener against the San Diego Padres. It looks like we'll have those morning lingering showers. We're doing a repeat performance performance there in San Francisco at 69 degrees because it was just spectacular and that is all going to come to a crashing end for your Wednesday at least a good 10 to 14 degrees cooler and sorry about the repeat here but it was just such a glorious day we thought we'd toss that in one more time. Meanwhile we do have nothing but sunshine for at least one more day before more precipitation enters the western states. Christian. All right, Roberta, I thought March was supposed to come in like a lion and out like a lamb. Maybe not this year. No, it came in like a lion and it left like a <laughs> lamb this time around. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Roberta. Then, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> A major security breach for millions of AT&T customers. The company is saying it has evidence that hackers gained access to more than 73 million current and former AT&T accounts. That data was dumped on the dark web just two weeks ago. The leak includes social security numbers and account PIN numbers. The company is saying it is checking to see if the breach came from AT&T itself or an outside vendor. Security experts say consumers are vulnerable. They need an advocate who can help the companies secure the data better. Uh, they also need an advocate who can uh, make it harder on those malicious actors. Affected customers will be notified by AT&T by email or by regular mail. Their four digit passcodes though have already been changed. The telecom company says it will pay for credit monitoring as warranted. And Google says it will destroy billions of data records in order to settle a lawsuit claiming it secretly tracked the Internet use of people who believed they were browsing privately. The terms of the settlement of a case filed in federal court in Oakland. Now, lawyers for the plaintiffs valuing the settlement rather at more than five billion dollars. The class action began in 2020 and covered millions of Google users who'd used the search engine since 
2016. Now, as part of the settlement, Google will update disclosures about what it collects in private browsing data. It will also allow incognito users to block third-party tracking for five years. Well, a woman says a major airline told her to cover up on a West Coast flight. Coming up, why she calls this discrimination. And a Las Vegas legend welcomes its final guests tonight. We will show you some of the send-off for the Strip's Tropicana Casino. Stay with us. Happy, great memories growing up. Ryan, because you're, we're saying goodbye for the last time. Like she said, for an era that's gone by, and it was a great era. Yeah, you can see the tears there. A bittersweet time for guests at Las Vegas' famed Tropicana Casino, counting down the hours before the resort closes its doors for good. This is the final night that the Tropicana will host guests after decades of history. The resort shows were part of what made stays at that property so special. Fox 5's Shauna Kalafi shows us how performers from shows over the years gathered together one last time to say goodbye. It's going to be hard to say goodbye to the Tropicana, you know, very much. About 175 former performers from the Foley's Bergier show at the Tropicana gathering there on Saturday to say their goodbyes to the iconic hotel. I understand that they need to take it down, but all the memories and everything that are going with it, that's, yeah, it, it makes me feel sad. Many of these performers spent years, even decades, dazzling on stage at the Tropicana. I was the featured specialty act for about a decade in the Folies Berger show. I uh, was an acrobat and a dancer in the show. Until the Foley show was shut down just before its 50th birthday. Kind of like it was in the 80s when we first came here. Everybody, is, all the show people knew each other and we'd go see other shows and it was a very small community, but now it's massive. Now, as the Tropicana itself bids farewell to its era on the Strip, former and current performers are looking back on the good times. In the dressing room every night, having fun, enjoying performing all together and having parties together. We've all moved to different states and we're all coming back here. So to all get together and see the faces we used to perform with, it's fantastic. Holding on to memories and friendships that will last long after the hotel is gone. It's going to be hard to imagine the trap not being here. I think for all of us because it, it has great memories, great times. That was Fox 5's Shauna Kalafi reporting. Tropicana's gaming floor will close at 3 a.m. in the morning. Bally's Corporation, which runs the resort, is requiring hotel guests to leave by noon tomorrow. A demolition to make room for a new Major League ball, ball, Baseball Stadium is not expected to begin for months. Bally's intends to build a new resort on the land right next to that new ballpark. And the Oakland A's plan to relocate to Las Vegas and call that new baseball park their new home. With the stadium not expected to be ready until at least 2028, the city of Oakland reportedly plans to offer a five-year lease extension to the A's at the Oakland Coliseum. Now, as part of that new deal, the A's would pay more than $19 million a year over five years for a total of $97 million. Reports show that right now they pay just $1.25 million per year. The A's current lease at the Coliseum expires at the end of this season. The two sides plan to meet tomorrow about the proposed contract that includes an opt out after three years. And today, Oakland Mayor Sheng Tao released a statement saying she is, quote, committed to doing everything in my power to keep the A's in Oakland. The terms we have proposed for a lease extension at the Coliseum are clear, reasonable and achievable. Having Major League Baseball in Oakland is what is best for the owners, the league, the players, and most importantly, the fans. College basketball will have Arizona buzzing later this week, taking a live look right now at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, which will host this year's NCAA Final Four. Fox 10's Steve Nielsen shows us what's being done to get the city ready for tens of thousands of basketball fans. At the Spotted Arcadia, Scott says they're trying to get as much business as they can this week. We constantly are pushing things to uh, 
to drive traffic. We have discounts for the events going on during games. We have special drinks, special shots. The Final Four is just the latest major event that impacts every corner of the valley. Massive the amount, the impact that it has on direct local businesses when the city of Phoenix and everyone does an amazing job to bring these major events in here. It's a direct impact. Arizona has a well earned reputation for successfully hosting major sporting events. At a news conference Monday, public safety leaders gathered to say they're prepared. Have there been any threats yet that you've communicated? No, I mean, there's always concern, right? And we wake up concerned. That's that's the nature of our business. But at the end of the day, no, it, everything we can see here, the planning has been set up. The NCAA has been a, a tremendous partner. We don't see that there's going to be anything abnormal. You're going to come and have a great time. After Super Bowls, the launch of Taylor Swift's tour, now the final four, it's been busy. Could there be a lull now? You know, it's it's interesting because it's competitive to get these events. And so we want to be in the regular rotation of all the major events. As you said, the major concerts, all sorts of things. And so we need the planning time as well, right? We got to regroup. We've got to look at how are we going to elevate our game for the next one. So we make good use of the time no matter what. We have the WNBA All-Star coming this July. And then we have the Women's Final Four in 2026. So we'll be ready to go. People keep seeing the success that we're having here and and how easy it is to work with the city in this group. Uh, we'll, we'll have more events. Scott says businesses like his get used to the traffic of these global events. Of sign, finding the next one. What's next? Let's get let's keep it going, guys. That was Fox 10's Steve Nielsen reporting. This is the second time the Final Four will be hosted at Glendale's State Farm Stadium. Games begin Saturday when Purdue takes on North Carolina State in the first game of the Final Four. The trial of an Idaho man charged with the deaths of his wife and his girlfriend's two children began with jury selection today. Chad Daybell has been charged with three counts of first-degree murder. The two children went missing in 2019. Their bodies were found a year later on Daybell's property. The children's mother was convicted last year and sentenced to life in prison in that case. The last survivor of the USS Arizona died today at his home in Northern California at the age of 102. Luke Hunter was just 19 years old on his post as a quartermaster on the battleship when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor more than 80 years ago. Nearly 1,200 sailors and Marines died on the Arizona on December 7, 1941, accounting for nearly half of the dead from the battle. Last year, Conter still had vivid memories of that day. We knew what was happening in five seconds. We didn't have time to look up and see what was coming. They were all right down at the water's edge coming in. Took a 15, 1600-pound bomb. Alongside them were two turrets. And they were bad, real bad in one spot. You pick up by the, their bodies and the skin would come off your head. Conter later went on to flight school and flew 200 missions. Lou Conter died at his home in Grass Valley today, surrounded by his family. Vietnam veterans in Colorado were honored during a special ceremony. The event was hosted by a military nonprofit. As Fox's Jeremy Hubbard tells us, organizers say it's past time to give them the hero's welcome they deserve. Our community failed them almost 50 years ago when they came home. A half century after they served their country in Vietnam, these veterans gathering in Firestone to hear the words they likely did not hear back then. Home. Fully aware of the tough transition so many Vietnam veterans experienced after the war, a group of nonprofits and American Legion Post 1985 wanted to send a message today. Our community failed them almost 50 years ago when they came home. Part of the work is apologizing. We didn't do a good job of welcoming people home. Welcome home. Among the Vietnam veterans awarded lapel pins, Cynthia Sherman. When I got out, you didn't dare admit that you were in the military. About 2007 was the first time I was ever thanked for my service. Also honored today, Dave Appel, who served in the Marines in Vietnam. As time goes on, you want to to realize that your sacrifice meant something to somebody.
most Vietnam veterans are now in their 70s. There are about 800,000 of them still alive today, but they're dying at a rate of about 500 per day, according to the Army. It's exactly why they've held this event for the last three years, and it's why they say we should all express gratitude while we can. Take a chance. You might feel awkward, but say welcome home. The best thing that can happen is that somebody will feel seen and will feel honored because you welcome them home. That was Fox 31's Jeremy Hubbard reporting. According to federal data, about 2.7 million men and women served in Vietnam during the war. More than 58,000 servicemen and women lost their lives. A woman says an airline made her cover up before takeoff, calling her clothing inappropriate. Coming up, what that passenger is doing now to fight back. And who wants to be a billionaire? We will tell you how tonight's jackpot is surprising even lottery officials. Yeah, some amazing surveillance video out of Eugene, Oregon, showing a man's near miss with a flying saw blade. There it is right there. That man entering a convenience store Thursday when that blade flew across the business's parking lot. Now, that blade was embedded in the store's doorframe. You can see it there sticking out. You can imagine just how much force it must have had behind it. That blade coming loose from a nearby construction site. Fortunately, uh, as you can tell, that man able to tell the tale, an unbelievable, unbelievable story. More dramatic video showing how first responders rescued a man clinging to a cliff in California's Golden Gate National Recreation Area. That man falling 50 to 60 feet from a trail that in that area just yesterday. Now we have that helicopter video for you as a crew with the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office spotted that man last night. One flight tactical officer was lowered to place him into a rescue device. The crew then lifting that man to safety. Fortunately, that man recovering after being treated for minor injuries. And a woman has filed a complaint against Delta Airlines saying that she was told to leave a flight because her clothing was, quote, too revealing. Lisa Archbold was flying to San Francisco from Salt Lake City in January when she was told to get off that flight. The professional DJ says the gate agent told her that she needed to cover up because what she had on was too revealing. She posted a video of what she was wearing of X, formerly known as Twitter. Archibald says she was treated like a criminal. She came to my seat and loudly asked to speak to me in private and escorted me off the plane as though I was a criminal. I felt it was a spectacle aimed at punishing me for not being a woman in the way she thought I should be a woman. Archbold says she was told that if she put on a jacket, she Your could fly, and she says that she complied. Now, in a press Neither conference in Los Angeles last week, she and her attorney, Gloria Allred, called on Delta to, to change their policy. Delta has not responded to Rest our request for a comment. War, they have, though, reportedly offered her an apology. And it is no April Fool's joke. Tonight's Powerball jackpot bigger than the game's organizers initially expected. A revised estimate now puts the jackpot at $1 billion. You can buy Powerball tickets in all West Coast states except for Hawaii, Alaska, Nevada, and Utah. Who wants to be a billionaire? Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.